Rick the Electronic Guy again, and here I'm going to show you today how to install Windows XP on your computer or any kind of Windows operating system. Check it out. First, what we're going to do is we're going to power the computer on. And the second thing we need to do is we need to get into BIOS first to figure out if it's on startup for the CD-ROM first. Now, to get into your BIOS, everybody's is different. Can be the configuration of the delete button, F1, F2, or F10 are the most common ones used today. So you then you'll come down here into your boot sequence, and you'll want to make sure that CD DVD is the first one in there. And once we have that one that's set up from there, we can just back out. If it's not saved, change it to that so that we can get it in there, and then we'll just boot it up from the CD. Then you'll take your Windows CD and you will put it in any operating system disk even Linux is the same way so now that we have the CD in the computer will boot and ask you if you want to run the CD So once it comes out, it says press any key to boot from a CD. Hit any key on your keyboard so that the computer will inspect it and get it ready. Now, I'm going to do a, a fresh install. Since the customer's drivers do not work right, they installed Windows 7. And we're going to change it back to Windows XP for him. And uh, the main reason was is his video driver wasn't supported by Windows 7. So we're going to switch it back on over to where he had it. The longest part on Windows XP is waiting for it to load all its stuff that it needs to get before it can install Windows. Should we always make sure we got all our product keys too, Rick? Depending if you're using your original COA. So if you're using your original CDs that came with your computer, a lot of the time your COA will be good. You won't need your product key all the time. But sometimes in the event if you do, your laptop or your computer usually has them on the bottom or in the back. What should we do if we have the keys on the bottom? and uh, they're burnt off from or worn out from use. Well, nobody's going to give you a free copy of Windows today, so you're probably going to have to go out and buy a new one or buy a used CD. And on here, you're just basically going to follow your on-screen instructions. I know it's a little small, but uh, here I'm going to, what I'm doing is I'm deleting the partition so that it completely wipes out the hard drive. 
and now we have a clean hard drive. What it does is down on the bottom you'll come up to a screen that'll say create partition after you delete the partition and you're gonna press C. This is on Windows XP and then you hit enter and it creates it. It's examining the hard drive and now it knows to install it on that drive. And then we just do a quick format and it's a new raw partition. It'll do itself a quick format and then it'll get ready to load Windows for installation files. When you get to this screen here, what it's doing is it's actually copying all these files onto your drive just so it can start the computer in Windows XP format to keep its operating system at where it wants to be. Pretty much when this screen is done loading, we'll be ready to go again. So until it's done, I'm going to stop right here until the next screen appears and I'll start back up for you guys. Alright guys, I'm back on the next screen. This is what appears when you're installing Windows XP. Um, what happens is, is your computer is going to reboot several times. And while you have the CD in there, it's going to say, press any key to boot from CD. Do not press anything. If you do you're gonna start it all over again and doing the same steps back number one all over again in a complete circle so basically you're just waiting for this screen to come up and it does have a clock down timer till it's done and complete so I will come back when this is all complete said and done okay guys we're back and we're at our region and language options so you know what region and language you're gonna be so you just click on next because it's all in US for me right now and then you'll put the person's name in of the computer and whatever organization if you want one and you'll click on next and the administrative password and the computer name you can make this if you're gonna use like a media server or anything you can just come over here and change that to like PC and then you have your computer name set up for your computer which will work a lot better and then of course it's not April of 2003 it's actually what's the date today? today is the 23rd January 23rd, 2013. What time is it, sir? It is 11.28. It's 11.28 p.m. And we are in pretty much... Uh, does this one have it? Pretty much seven mountain time. No, we're Arizona, so they do have Arizona on this one. I couldn't remember. And then you click next, and we'll wait until that one comes to an end and wait for our next pop up screen for you. All right, guys, we're back at the next pop up screen, which this is for the XP Professional Setup Network settings. 
What we're going to do at this point is right now we're just going to hit next for the typical settings which most people will use unless you're doing something special which you would already know what you're setting up when you're doing this operating system. And right here is for the work group name. You just go ahead and click next on that. Hey guys, we're back at the next screen and this is display settings. Uh, pretty much you're just going to hit enter or OK and if you can see everything hit OK because Windows is adjusting for you automatically. And just follow the screen put your name in on here the your name when I'm done on this it used to give you an error and it wouldn't let you just put your first name in I just space it once and then click next to get rid of that problem and when we're done the computer starts up and it says welcome to Windows And that is the tutorial on how to install Windows on your computer. Stay tuned for how to install your drivers after you've installed Windows. Have a good night and thank you for watching Rick the Electronic Guy.